I just want to let you know I got to the bus. That's the bus right there going to Nederland, Colorado. We just, I just got on board, took my coat off. I thought I'm going to record a, a hello or something like that on the video. So uh, it is uh, snowing up there. <laughs> we got about an inch of snow, different places, and uh, it's pretty chilly. But uh, that's where I'm headed. I just finished class a few minutes ago. Now I'm headed up there to Nederland, Colorado, 8,300 feet. See you in a few moments. Good morning, my friend. I just made it off the bus, but just uh, just dropped me off just a few moments ago. This is the park and ride up here in Nederland, Colorado. You can see it's a little bit of snow, and um, it's kind of flurrying right now. But uh, ain't it great? It's pretty chilly too. All right. So now I'm gonna walk down there to the corner, and there's a little breakfast place there. I'm gonna see if I can get some breakfast, and then we'll do our job out here. All right. See you in a few moments. Bye. Good morning. <clears throat> Welcome to the channel. <clears throat> Welcome to Nederland, Colorado. Welcome to 8,300 feet plus. We're just below the Eldora Ski Resort, just north or northwest of Boulder. And uh, it's a great day. It's brand new. A lot of new snow. The guy was up there on the roof across the street here, shoveling off. It looks like about six or eight inches of snow up there. Looks like about three inches of snow, different places, two inches here and there. But it's still snowing, snowing right now, and uh, looks like it might snow for at least the first part of the morning. And uh, but I'm up here. Uh, I want to apologize for not coming out to the street for the last couple of weeks. When I went to Colorado Springs in um, the last Friday, a couple two Fridays ago, uh, something happened to me that I hurt my left side of my rib cage. I don't know what happened, but I was in immense pain. Uh, by the time I got home, I was just, I couldn't even sleep all night Friday night, and I was up all day Saturday. I couldn't preach on Sunday, and I couldn't preach for the whole week. In fact, for the last two weeks, I could not preach because I couldn't lay down. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't do anything, but it was like a big chunk of my left side here, right up underneath the bottom part of my rib cage. I don't know what happened down there. Something happened that uh, took me out, and uh, all the guys in the church have been praying for me. And uh, I kind of like, I've only got about 5% of the pain left. So I don't know what's going on, but uh, that's why I've not been out to preach. I've been doing our Sunday, uh, no, uh, our 
classes during the day, Monday through Friday, but uh, I've not been able to go out and preach, so and I apologize for that. So when you don't see a street sermon, that means one thing, and that means John's not out preaching. And uh, that's why you'll see this sermon here Friday. Uh, it'll go live tomorrow morning, Saturday morning. It'll go live around 4 o'clock or so, 5 o'clock in the morning. It'll go live. And uh, so when you see that video, you knew that John was out preaching. But if you do not see a street preaching video, a street sermon, that means John's not out preaching. There's something wrong because I'm scheduled to preach six days a week, Sunday through, Saturday, Sunday through Friday. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. This is the end of the week. And, uh, and I wanted to make it up here. And so I kept praying the Lord would provide this to me. So he got me on the... In fact, I left two hours earlier to get up here just to make sure I was here. So I was on the 810 bus and got up here just fine. Had breakfast across the street there. And uh, so uh, being on the street as a street minister, street preacher, uh, sometimes has physical challenges that come with that job. It's not what you think it is. Sometimes you look at the videos on the on the uh, YouTube and you see a 10 or 15 minute uh, guys preaching and you know oh, that looks like it'd be fun or I think they're doing a good job. You don't realize all the stuff before and after and during it. A lot of problems that happen. A lot of a lot of angry people. There's the wrath. Uh, you know Satan has wrath. God has wrath too. But Satan hates street preachers no no doubt about that and so he brings people who are filled with one of his angels the, the devil's angels and they do things to you that normally nobody knows about because most Christians don't come out to the street to preach or to minister they're all in protected little private cubicles called the church building and that's where they hide and that's where they congregate but that's not where I go I do have a church I do build I am building a church and pastoring a church and uh, so if, you, you know, if you're in Boulder area, you can always come to our church and hide out. But the problem is, uh, you we're going to kick you out the door and tell you to go out and preach, too. And so, uh, uh, but that's why I'm here now. Uh, it doesn't, the weather is not what keeps me from preaching. Uh, like I said, you know, people say, well, you're going out there in the snow. You've had all week with 70-degree weather, beautiful spring weather, and now you come out in the snow. You know, 35 degrees and snowing, you come out and preach weather does not affect my preaching I know weather affects most people but it doesn't affect me when I say have a great day or I'm having a great day it's, oh yeah it's a nice day it has nothing to do it's my temperament my spirit that is having a great day it doesn't matter what's going on around me remember with a thousand will fall to your left ten thousand you're right but it won't come near you and so uh, my day is not based upon the weather <laughs> at all <laughs> you know and it's not based on good times or bad times. But, uh, and so, but that's why I haven't been coming out because I've been physically unable. Uh, I'm praying that today that this, uh, whatever's happened to my left side has, will not flare up because uh, on Monday morning I head for Fort Collins, Colorado, and I'll be up there for five days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And uh, that's the northern gate of the state of Colorado. So I go to the gates of the state. I'm called to the state of Colorado. And so once every quarter, I go to every corner, every gate, uh, like like in January, that first quarter of the year, I go to the western gate. Then I'm gonna go to the northern gate. Then I'll, in July, I'll go to the eastern gate in Burlington on the Kansas line. And then in October, the fourth quarter, I'll go to Trinidad, Colorado, on the New Mexico. So it's Utah, Wyoming, Kansas and New Mexico borders uh, of Colorado. So I actually go to the gate and that's where I go. And then we have several gates in our the cities that I go to. So uh, I've been, I'll give you a kind of a little testimony. I'll, I haven't prayed yet, but I'm gonna pray in just a second. I just wanna get this in before I pray. But sometimes when I pray, people cut the video off. They don't want to hear the prayer. I don't know why that is, but they do. So I was setting my camera up to do my scripture short and a gentleman walked up that I recognized, and he said, uh, what are you going to be doing today, preacher? And he says, I'm going I'm to do a video for YouTube, a street sermon. And I, you know, he says, you know, I know I am, I'm from Breckenridge, and uh, there's another guy that uh, walks around with a sign and kind of moves around the city and stands at a circle in Breckenridge, Colorado. It's a very famous ski resort up in Summit County. And uh, I've been praying for Breckenridge as a city to go to. It's on my list of prayer, list, you know, of cities. I have a lot of them, 
but it's in the top portion of my list because it's, it's not just beautiful. It's very, very famous for people from all over the world go to Breckenridge, Colorado. Just like in Vail. I'll be going to Vail here not too much longer, too. I only go to Vail about every three or four months, but I do go to Vail, Colorado, also. Very famous international ski resort. And I uh, go there year-round. And uh, so when he came up and talked about Breckenridge, I felt a witness in my spirit to begin continue praying about Breckenridge. And I asked him, well, where the man that had the sign stand in Breckenridge says a long time ago, he doesn't come anymore. Yeah, I haven't seen him for years, but he used to circulate through the city of Breckenridge with his Jesus sign. And because uh, he knows I lift a banner and he's probably about 70 years old, maybe 70, early 70s. And uh, so he told me where he stands and where he circulates through the city. And I thought, that's pretty cool. And uh, so how about that? See, God quickened to me by using somebody to help me to pray. So that's how God works sometimes. He just knows He always speak to you. He actually brings people by you, and they give a word. They don't even know they're used, being used of God. But when they are used of God, you recognize it inside of them. But even then, you don't take what they say and just run down the street with it. You take everything to God in prayer. Everything to God in prayer. Let's pray. Lord, we take this sermon... We take our time out here on the street. We take my banner, my cones, and my corner out there. We take this visitor center here. We take the videos. We take the scripture short. We take our presence uh, here in Netherland, and we offer it up to you, Lord. We do it all in prayer, and uh, we want to do what you want us to do, not what we want to do, but what you want us to do. And we thank you, Lord, that I was a witness there in the restaurant today by so many, many people. Had a chance to talk to people. It's really glorious to be a witness for Christ. And it just amazes me more how, uh, how faithfulness can be rewarded now. Not just later, but faithfulness can be rewarded now by more people coming to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord. And we dedicate this sermon, we dedicate this ministry today here in Nettleton, Colorado on April 19th, 2024. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to start off with the scripture short that I did, and that's in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 1. It says here in the King James, Better is the poor that walketh in his integrity than he that is perverse in his lips and is a fool. All right? As a fool. <laughs> Got to wave to the sheriff. Got to make sure everybody knows where you are and everybody you recognize everybody i make sure that everybody knows i'm here a lot of people that i've already met this morning i got here about uh about nine a uh, little after nine o'clock i guess something like that it takes about 45 minutes to get up here from boulder and uh and uh so i met several of the local people and uh two of them uh recognized me and uh one of them who owns the restaurant said uh he noticed that I hadn't been here for the last couple months. I told him I was sick. He said, it's going to be good today because it's been really busy on Fridays. I said, okay, good. And so <laughs> they paid for my coffee. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I also want to say something about the breakfast. Uh, in the beginning, I never used to have breakfast or go out cause, and eat when I leave the house. I don't really go to restaurants. I don't like spending the money because uh, I'm really frugal with my money. I'm not flagrant with the money. I, if I'm going to eat, I bring something from the house because uh, that's where I can save money in the Lord because all my money is from God and I want to be a good steward of God's money. And then uh, uh, the Lord quickened me to, it's okay to go have breakfast when I go out of town or, or different places, have a cup of coffee or something like that. And uh, I started spending my own money. Then after a while, I've been doing this for next month will be five years. And then uh, the Lord kind of quickened me not to spend my own money but to, to allow the church to uh, pay for it because for, I'm working for the church not working for the church but I'm involved in a church and have them pay for the for the breakfast so I did that for a little while then I didn't like that and then I said I'm like I'm going to pay for it myself Lord out of my own paycheck and so uh, I started doing that and then uh, here about a year ago we had a brother who watches me and who prays for our ministry said, John, I want to buy you breakfast. I want to send you some money, but this is not for the church, not for the ministry. It's for you to go have breakfast. I want to buy your breakfast for you. 
And so once a month, he sends me uh, a couple $20 bills for breakfast when I travel. And so that's what I spent today. I spent one of the $20 bills there in the restaurant for a tip and some coffee and my breakfast. And uh, it was a real blessing to me. A real blessing. Because I wouldn't have done this. And it really helped me to get out of the house early. That's why a lot of times I don't come out of a house early because I'm hungry. And uh, if I get to the corner too early, there's nobody around. It's real quiet. It's just, you know, it takes a long time to get things rolling along. But if I knew I was going to have breakfast, because I come up here in the morning or wherever I go, uh, I want to, I, I need something to kind of help me move along. And that's what breakfast is all about. So the Lord quickened to me that it's okay to go have breakfast when you get to Netherlands. And he quickened to me, the gentleman who uh, gives me the two $20 bills for, the, for breakfast, for, for a meal when I'm out in the ministry. And uh, so I praise God for, uh, for that gentleman. I don't want to mention his name because he's kind of secretive in that. But he relates it to when Elijah was uh, out in the field when he prayed for, the, for it to stop raining. And there was a, dr a drought that happened for three years. And... Uh, the raven who brought Elijah his food. And that's what he calls himself, the raven. He brings preachers and ministers food when they're out serving God. And that's what he found me here a couple of years ago. And uh, that's what he's been doing. And it's really been a huge, wonderful blessing. I, I struggled for a while in the beginning because I didn't understand it. I thought everything went to God. And God quickened me for quite a few months, I prayed, that, uh, no, this is for you, John. And uh, he gave me a lot of Bible verses. I said, all right, all right, then that's what I'm going to do then. And uh, so that's what I do. And that's what I, I didn't spend any church money for the breakfast. I didn't spend any ministry money for the, for the uh, breakfast. I didn't spend any donation money. Nothing comes to me. Everything goes to the church. Except when, like this gentleman here, uh, the, he calls himself the raven. He does that for me, and it's really snowing now, <laughs> and a great. So I just wanted to highlight that for you know whoever is wondering about that. I'm very very frugal with my money. All right. So let's get back into Proverbs chapter 19, verse uh, verse one. Better is the poor that walketh in his integrity. So I guess I was demonstrating to you my integrity uh, because I look at myself as being uh, not financially rich. I've never been rich. I've never made a lot of money. Uh, never, in fact, uh, and I'm going to look at this verse as poor in finances. I know you can look at poor spiritually or poor some other area, but I'm going to use the word uh, finances because that's what I'm talking about. I don't know why that is, but that's what I'm doing. Because money can be those uh, that tool that Satan uses to break your integrity. Yeah, especially just we had just finished a tax season. And uh, so you have to look at your taxes. Are you paying your taxes? You know, I was ready to pay several thousands of dollars in taxes because we're, we're a non-profit. We're a non-profit religious organization, but we have to pay our taxes and file our taxes like everybody else. We're not a 501c3 corporation. We're an LLC, our church ministry. And so I was filling out my forms, form after form after form after form, and uh, ended up being that we spent so much, you know, most of the money all goes out into the ministry. And so we had so much money going out that it offset all the money that came in. And at the bottom, at the end of the, all the forms and the hours and hours and hours and days of filling out all the forms, uh, I didn't owe the government anything. I thought, well, how about that? I mean, I mean, I was willing to pay whatever I got her to pay, but, you know, uh, we are a nonprofit, so nonprofit means more money goes out as it comes in. We just don't hoard the money. And uh, anyways, I just thought I'd mention that because it's about integrity. I also mentioned integrity because of the breakfast. I wanted to make sure people knew that I wasn't spending God's money or church money or ministry money to have breakfast. And uh, uh, that it's a special gift by somebody who gives it to me personally to do that. And he's very exact. He says, if you don't do it this way, then I'll withdraw because this, this is my ministry to ministers. Oh, wow. He says, I will draw it from you because that's what I do. I help ministers. I'm like a raven that ministers to the minister. And uh, I thought, wow, okay. So that's happened to me about 
I think three or four times. I don't think it's happened five times in the last five years uh, that I've been on the street. I don't think it has, but uh, anyways, man, it's really snowing. <laughs> Welcome to springtime. Better is the poor that walketh in his integrity. So that's why I was explaining integrity. Integrity is really, really, really important. And if you don't handle your finances properly, and you don't, when I say properly, I mean legally. Not what you think you should do or what you think it should happen. You do it based on the laws of the land that you live in. And you don't make up your own laws, you obey the laws of the land. And if you're not obeying the laws of the land that you live in, then you're not walking in integrity. Just, just straight up, I'll just tell you like it is. You're not walking in integrity. If you, if you break the law, you're not walking in integrity. If you speed, if the speed limit is 65 and you're doing 95, you're breaking the law and you're not walking in integrity. You know, very simple. If, and we can go through all kinds of examples in your life how you can break that integrity. Because the bottom line here says, better is the poor that walketh in his integrity than he that is perverse in his lips. Perverse. Twisted. A liar. A cheat. A steal. A thief. All right, we know who that is. The resource of that is Satan. In his lips, all right, and is a fool. So when you break your integrity, you go from being a man or woman of integrity to a man or woman of a fool. That's, that's what happens. When you lie on your taxes, when you lie to the government, when you lie to people, talking about finances now, you become a fool. It's just the way it is, man. So you have to be honest and trustworthy for God to keep blessing you. And God's blessing this ministry above and beyond my wildest imagination. I can hardly believe what God is doing with our ministry. It amazes me. Amazes me. Just like the, the clothes I've got on. I didn't buy these clothes. People bought them for me. I mean, it's crazy, isn't it? It's crazy. It's crazy. So I am so yelling because I can't hear myself talk out here. Uh, when it's raining or when it's wet like this, the tires make a lot of noise and it bounces off these buildings and stuff. So it's hard for me to hear. But I've got earplugs. I'll put them in after I'm done here. So that's uh, Proverbs 19, verse 1. Better is the poor that walketh in his integrity than he that is perverse in his lips and is a fool. All right. Also, I want to make mention that the recording for the uh, scripture short, no, for this video and all the clips and stuff, I, I'm trying something a little different on the camera. I quick switched it from 1080 to 4K, and I switched it from 60 frames per second to 24 frames per second. And I want to see if there's a difference. I've never filmed. All my videos have been in 1080, uh, 1080p frame, and a 60 frames per second. Uh, but this one is not. So I noticed it was a little shaky. I don't know why it's shaky, but. We'll find out later on. So this whole video might be all kind of jumbled up. Don't know that for a fact. But uh, so that's just, so once again, the video is being recorded in 4K, 24 frames per second, rather than the normal that I've been doing for the last four years uh, in 1080, 1080, uh, 60 frames per second. All right. All right. So I'm going to preach today in the from the Sunday prayer letter. If you're not part of the Sunday prayer letter. You want to go to gospelevangelistchurch.com, gospelevangelistchurch.com. That, that'll take you to our one-page website that allows you to sign up for our uh, Sunday prayer letter, our newsletter that we send out every Saturday night, Sunday morning. And uh, there's nothing in there that says you got to give. I'm not, none of that is like that. Most churches who send out newsletters beg you to give to them. We don't ever beg for people to give to us. That's God's job. God asks you to give. I don't ask you to give. But, you know, but we do receive giving. But uh, you want to be a part of our Sunday prayer letter. You really, really do. And so yesterday I was able to uh, move the, uh, so we have two websites. Have, we have like six different domain names. Uh, one, the gospelevangelistchurch.org.org goes to our new website. Gospelevangelistchurch.org goes to our new website. That's kind of like a front door to my missionary website. And uh, which is at johnshuck.org. That's been there for probably 10 or 15 years. Can't remember when I started that. I start and stop that off and on. But uh, 
Uh, and then uh, we moved the gospelevangelschurch.com to the uh, one-page website for our, for our uh, newsletter to sign up. So you'll know who I am and what's, what's going on. And then, uh, okay. And a lot of this will be in the description box. I'll kind of re-highlight some of this stuff. And, uh, uh, you know, okay. So in the Sunday prayer letter, everlasting fire, are we uh, able to imagine the agony of it never going out? Can we imagine the agony of everlasting fire never going out? Wow, the sun's going to come out. <laughs> Crazy, isn't it? <laughs> That's in Matthew 25, 41. That's our title. And that title, I, didn't, I did not make it up. That title came from the uh, artificial intelligence thing that I I'm, I'm, were subscribed to, to uh, look at different videos and different things, trying to trying to promote our videos so we can touch more people. All right. so I think we're up over 820. I think this morning it was 829, I think, is the scripture, subscri the subscriber count, 829. But it comes and goes. It goes up and down all the time. And, uh, all right, so let's go over to uh, Matthew 25, 41. That's where I want to talk on. That'll be on uh, Thursday's verse. No, Wednesday's verse. No. Tuesday, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> These are all the verses we preach on. Yeah, Tuesday, Leviticus 13, 55, and Matthew 25, 41. Okay? And uh, these are all on the word fire. That's, what, that's why we're preaching on this. Let's go to uh, Leviticus 13, 55 first. Leviticus 13, 55. Uh, and the reason why we're using Leviticus is because it's verses that have the word fire. In the King James, there's 506 verses that have the word fire within it. And we're talking on fire all year long. My banner is called fire. Everyone shall be salted with fire. Have fire within yourself. He shall burn the chaff with fire, things like that. Uh, on one side, it says Jesus Christ. And then below that, it says he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And uh, so uh, have fire within yourself, something like that. So my banner is called fire, and that's the one I lift all year long, all right? Yesterday, last year's banner uh, was called Holy Ghost. No, it was called, uh, it was called God Bless You, and it was all about the Holy Ghost. And, uh, uh, and this one here is on fire. So Leviticus, we're not talking and preaching on the law we're simply highlighting a verse that has the word fire and its corresponding connecting verse that's in the New Testament that also has the word fire. And we're going from the very ends of the Bible, the very, begin the very first time the fire was mentioned in Genesis, and the very last time it was mentioned in Revelation, and then we're moving inward all the way to the center, very, very sequentially in step, to the center of the Bible, wherever that, wherever we end up at, okay, and that'll be all year long. So this one here is Leviticus on Tuesday. Uh, it was on 13:55, and it's right here. And it says this: and the priest shall look on the plague. After that, it is washed. And behold, if the plague had not changed his color, and the plague be not spread. It is unclean. Thou shalt burn it in the fire. It is a fret inward, whether it be bare within or without. So once again, we're looking at the word fire. That this plague that is inside this uh, cloth, their clothing, the priest takes it and look, listen. And the priest shall look at the plague on the plague after that is washed, the clothing that is washed. And he beholds it, and if the plague has not changed color, because the plague changes color, you know, kind of like mold changes color, a disease changes color as it progresses through different stages, okay? Uh, it's color, and the plague be not spread, it is unclean, okay? It's unclean. Unclean. You don't want to put unclean things on, you know? It's very, very important, <clears throat> all right? Uh, unclean. Thou shalt burn it in the fire. So things that are unclean are going to be burned in the fire. Kind of get that idea. Burned in fire. 
So your wood, hay, and stubble is really unclean to the Lord and will be burned in the fire, believe it or not. It can be clean. So do you want to do unclean things? You know, you think, oh, this is a good thing I can do for God. But it's wood, hay, and stubble. You know that? All of our works will be tested by fire. But when it's gold, silver, and precious stones, it will not have plague. It will not have blemishes or spots. Because when it's tested by fire, it will withstand the testing of fire, the trying of fire. All right, it says here that it will be burned in the fire. It is a fret inward. And what inward I'm looking at here is when you have plague on the outside and you're looking at it, that plague sometimes spreads, but it doesn't spread on the outside. It spreads to the inside. Inside, okay? It spreads to the inside. And that's why you don't want sin or uncleanness or any kind of filth of the world. You don't, you don't want to run down the course of the world like I talked about in class this morning. Because that uncleanness will cling, its, cling itself to you, stick to you, and it will actually move inward to your spirit. And it will begin to corrupt your spirit. And eventually you could become a child of disobedience and disobey God. And we, read a, we, we did that in the class also. So consider that, very, very highly consider that, your walk in the Lord, your walk in the Lord. So let's take that verse and then we'll go over to Matthew 25, and that's 41. This is the corresponding verse that is with this other one in Leviticus we just talked on, 25, 41. Let me do it this way. Let me find 41. Um, 41, there it is there. Let's go back over to Leviticus. If I can remember, I forget the address here. 1355. I'll read it and we'll jump over. 1355. 1355. My hands are getting cold now. 1355. Oops. Hang on. There it is. So let me read this and I'll jump right over to Matthew. And the priest shall look on the plague after that is washed. And behold, if the plague have not changed its color, and the plague be not spread, it is unclean. Thou shalt burn it in the fire. It is a fret inward, whether it be bare within or without. Within or without. Bare. You know, you can bear witness to it. All right. Then over here, Matthew 25, 41, it says, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Let me read that one more time. Matthew 25, 41. This is Jesus speaking. Then shall he say unto them on the left hand. Okay, left hand, right hand. Remember the goats and the sheep? Right, he's going to separate the goat from the sheep. He's going to separate the wheat from the tare. He's going to separate the blessing from the cursing. He's going to separate the children of disobedience from the children of wrath. He's going to separate the saints from all the wickedness of this world. It's just how God is. Now we have a choice to make. All right. Then shall he say also unto them on the left, them on the left hand, depart from me, depart from me. Now, when Jesus says, depart from me, what are you going to do? You're going to argue with him? So I'm not going to leave. I'm going to stay here. I like it here. Well, what happened to the soldiers who came up to Jesus and looking for Jesus? And Jesus says, here, I am. I am he. And when he spoke, they fell down. So when Jesus speaks, depart from me, there is no recourse for you. You fall down and you fall all the way into everlasting fire. When Jesus speaks, people fall. Yeah. When Jesus speaks, people fall. All right? Thou shalt say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed. Ye is all the people on his left hand. All right? Those are the goats, I think. If I'm reading it from Heron Sunday, saying this correctly. They're the people who are cursed. So in Deuteronomy 30, 19, Jesus said, that I place before you blessing and cursing, life and death. So we can see that cursing and death go together. So when you curse people, when you curse people, 
you're actually speaking death to the person. And the Bible says, what you give out, what you sow, will come back to you. Yeah, think about that really closely, really closely. Now you can preach the Word of God that talks about that, but when you move into an area outside the Word of God where you're literally speaking curses upon people, you are doing something that is not really in accordance with the Word of God. And the reason why that is, is because we get caught, especially as street preachers. I mean, it happens to us all the time. We get caught up in all the turmoil and all the hubbub out here on the street. We get caught up in all the, you know, the problems, all the mocking and all the hating and all the cursing at us. And as, if it, we don't watch it, we kind of fall into that trap because they are cursed people. They have cursed themselves. They are judged by their own mouth. You know? And so we fall into that, and before you know it, you're cursing them back. Yeah. You don't want to do that. You have to stay in discipline. You have to discipline yourself. You always have to humble yourself. So be alert when you come out to preach on the street. And, uh, you, you know, if they yell at you, you don't yell back. You know, if they curse you, you don't curse back. You know, you have to watch that. You know, you want to bless people even in their wrath and their curses. You want to bless them. And why do I say bless them? You want to bless them because the blessing of the Lord for them is to be cursed and to cast into everlasting fire. Now that sounds kind of weird. It's kind of like, well, what does that mean? A lot of us think that blessing is a goodness that comes on us. Well, it's good when we get the wicked away from us. It is good that the Lord will cast the wicked out of heaven when they're judged. You know, however this is working out here. Uh, and it says here, And they shall say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed and everlasting fire. That's a good thing. It's a blessing maybe uh, to us to that they are cast out from us. And so another way you can look at this is when you approach people and you know and you discern that they have a devil. Do you want to leave the devil in the person or do you want to take authority of the devil inside them? So you have to make a choice. Most preachers today do not believe that there are devils. They may, they may say that, but they never follow through with their ministry. At least I don't hear it on YouTube. And I haven't heard it for two decades at our church in, in California. They stopped that years ago because it's so offensive to cast devils out. It's offensive. And uh, that bothers a lot of people because it stirs the devil up and they don't like to be stirred up. And so they don't talk about it. I love talking about it because I work in that ministry of deliverance all the time. We've had several deliverances in our church. We've had several out on the street. I've cast out probably a couple dozen minimum face-to-face -face devils since I've been on the street the last four and a half years. Pretty sure. A couple dozen. Maybe a lot more, but at least I'm thinking about two dozen people. I can, I can see their face. Now, what would happen to those people if I just let them live in their curse that came from a devil? You know, I need to take authority over that devil. And then when I take authority over that devil, because Jesus said, first bind the devil, first bind the strong man, the devil that's in the house. Then you can go in and take the goods of the house. What is the goods of the house? The goods of the house is the soul in that house. That's the goods. The strong man is not the goods. The soul of the house. So there's, there's the, the, the thief and there's the goods. There's the thief and the soul. There's the devil stealing that soul and that soul, that devil's plan is to take that soul to everlasting fire. Are you going to let that happen? Are you? Really? because you don't believe it? See, most people that preach, they don't believe it, they're not baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. They may say, I'm baptized with the Holy Ghost, but they never cast any devils out. Yeah, they don't. They can't even see the devil. They don't even know the devil's around. They may say, you got a devil, but they don't know that. They're just speaking that. But when you're baptized with the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, gives you a gift of discernment and you can see in the Spirit and you can see the devils. And the devils know that you can see them. Now how that works, I don't know. 
I don't know how the devils can know that you're seeing them. And other times, other Christians who can't see them know that they can't be seen. Now, how does that happen? I don't know that. So there must be some sort of uh, reaction or some movement in the spirit that the devil knows that you have spiritual eyes. How that works, I don't know still. But I've seen hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of devils over all my years of preaching and ministering in the spirit. And they've known that I see them. Once I see the devil, I know now that that devil's leaving. Yeah, that devil's leaving. Sometimes I don't, I'm not shown the devil in somebody, but I know the devil is there in them. And when I say devil, I'm not talking about Satan. I'm talking about one of his angels. I don't use that other word that people use because it's not in the King James Bible. And it has a bad definition to it. I don't want to use a wrong definition. I want to make sure when I say devil that I'm speaking about evil in somebody. Evil. Evil. And when you speak, you say that other word that a lot of people say, you don't know you're speaking about evil. But here is evil. All right? And so what I do then, if I can't see the devil with my spiritual eyes, because the Holy Spirit hasn't opened my eyes by the spirit of discernment, then I, but I know that devil's there. I bind that devil. Because I have the keys of the kingdom. All of us have it if you want to use it. So I use the keys of the kingdom. Whatever I bind on earth is bound in the spirit. I bind that devil. I take authority over the devil, the thief, the strong man that's in people's house, their body. Yeah, that's what I do. Why not? You'd be surprised what kind of ministry you'll, you'll, will happen when you do that. Because Jesus said, first, bind the strong man. Then you can go in and steal, you know, take the goods of the house. And I love coupling that with the other verse that says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Seems to me that that would be a commandment. First by the strong man. Sound like a commandment to me. Then why aren't preachers doing it? I don't know. Personally, I think it's because I blame it on church pastors and church teachers. They're not teaching all the counsel of God. They teach portions to make people feel good. All right, whatever. So look at this one more time. Then shall he, this is Matthew 20, 25, 41. Then shall he say unto him, unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, unto everlasting fire. Everlasting fire. Everlasting means that fire never goes out. It is ever, forever, forever, eternally lasting. Think about that. Think about that. Because if you do not tell your, your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad, your grandfather, your grandmother, your aunts, your uncles, your nephews, your nieces, all your family members, you tell the people next door, on your left and your front, across the street, you tell the people down the street, you tell the people you do business with, you don't tell all those people that are in your life right now today that Jesus Christ is Lord, you don't say that to them, then you're walking with those who are sending them to hell. If you don't tell people that they're a sinner and that they need to repent, they're not going to go to heaven. You might be the only person in their life who's got enough courage to tell them that you must repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we do that all kinds of different ways. Our brother Brent in our church, he wears a Jesus is Lord hat everywhere he goes. When he's on the job site, it's what he wears. And for years and years and years, his family hated that hat, he told me. But now they love it. Now they love it. Now they love it. They're proud to have their dad wearing a hat that says Jesus is Lord, wherever he goes. And that opens up doors for Brent to preach and to minister everywhere he goes, every day of the week, seven days a week. He is ministering. That's why God is blessing him, blessing him and blessing him. Because the Bible says, hath God ordained that they that preach the gospel should live of the gospel? Brent makes his living preaching the gospel, even though he owns a company runs a business, his wife runs a company, they're all got all this stuff going on, but because he preaches the word of God to everywhere he goes, he's being blessed of God. So what are you doing? You say, oh, and Brent's not even call, he doesn't call himself a preacher. He just loves Jesus. <laughs> I love that man. I love him. He was the one who did the golden last Friday. That was Brent. You know, an exhortation by Brent. You know, sorry about the audio, but you know, that was his first video he's ever done. He had all kinds of testimonies in church. And when he came home from Golden last Friday, Golden's the second Friday of the month. All right? So 
So once again in Matthew 25, 41, then shall he say unto them on the left hand, depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire. Now, the, now think about this for a moment, what I'm going to read now. It says, prepare for the devil and his angels. The everlasting fire is not prepared for us. And I'm talking, when I say us, I'm talking about mankind. It was never originally prepared for mankind, right? It was prepared for the devil, Satan, the red dragon, who was cast out of heaven and a third of the stars that followed him that were cast out. They are, that's where the everlasting fire is prepared for. Okay, prepared for that. However, because we're made in the image and likeness of God, we're spirit beings, God breathed into the nostrils of Adam, man became a living soul. That living means there's no death in that soul. It's a living soul. Now that living soul can't go to heaven anymore. Where's it gonna go? Because the body goes back to the dust of the, earth, of the world. Out of the dust, it, goes, it returns back to the dust. But what happens to the spirit? Well, if that spirit, once it rejected Christ and became a trespass to the, to the kingdom of God, they trespassed. What do you do with trespassers? You cite them and you give them a ticket for trespassing. They broke the law. So a trespass, a trespasser has to be dealt with. And a trespa trespasser must be cast into everlasting fire that is prepared for the devil and his angels. Right? That's why we must go to every single soul that we know and can constantly be preaching the gospel. And if you cannot go, then you do what we do and what so many others do. You support ministries. You give them funding. You pray for them. You help them. Because then you be join the team that they're on. Like Brother Nolan preached to here a couple days ago when he was in Charlotte. And at the end of that video, he said, we're a team. You know, one person does this, another person does that, but we're a team. Even though you can't see them, they're behind the camera or on the other side. You know, like for example, uh, you know, what can I say here? So for example, let me say this. I'm not in Charlotte. I'm not, I don't live in Colorado, North Carolina. But what I do and our church does, we pray for Brian and Nolan and Cranford and all their ministers. We pray for them in church. So we send our prayers over there. But we just don't send our prayers. We follow those prayers with resources and we send our finances over to them. A little bit, you know, I'm not, you know, God brag, I'm just telling you, that's how you do it. When you send resources there, they take that money and they put gas in their car, park, pay for the parking because it's all very expensive, and they go preach the gospel. So that means we are part of their preaching. See that? We're a part of their preaching. We become a part of the team. We're not on the camera. We're not behind the camera, but we're at a distance helping them go. That's just one of many, many, many uh, preachers that we support, right? And so we have preaching going on overall. Right, right now, we have preaching going on in London, England. Right now, as I'm speaking, right now, we have ministry going forth in England. Right now, from ministries that we support. How about that, you know? We have it going in California. We have it going in, in uh, Ohio, down in Georgia, Florida, uh, North Carolina, uh, New York. We have ministry going over all over the place. How about that? So that's the value of partaking of the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you don't have to go anywhere. But you pray and you sin. All right? Because you don't want this to happen to people. You want to bring as many people with you as possible. And you do this. So then shall he say unto them on the left hand. Now those on the left hand, are they going to be your grandpa, grandma, your mom, your dad, your brother, and your sister? Are they? Your best friend? If you don't say something to them, their blood may be on your hands. I'm kidding, man. You, you, you've got to take soul winning serious. Serious. Okay. Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire. That's where God sent your grandfather, your grandmother. That's where God sent my dad. Let me be honest with you. My dad refused Christ all of his life till the day he died. He refused all the preaching, all the ministry, all the tracts, everything, I, all my prayers. He never got saved, and he died in his sin. And he's one of the people on the left. But his blood is not on my hand because I did everything that I was told by God. I did everything possible, but he continuously rejected. That's why you can't make people get saved. 
They have to receive Christ on their own. That's why you can't make people be disciples. I can't make you go out and tell your dad about Jesus Christ. I can share it, I can teach it, I can edify you, I can exhort you, I can comfort you, but I can't make you go do that. That's an ungodly teaching that is wrong. That's in the New King James Bible. I talked on that this morning. And uh, so my dad is one of those on the left hand who were cast into what it says right here. Depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Now, do I have remorse that my dad is going to everlasting fire? My earthly dad, who fathered me. Do I have remorse? No. I mean, I, nothing I can do about it. He's dead. He's gone. And he refused Christ all of his life. So I use it as a motivation to get you to tell your dad, your mom. Yeah, yeah. And still today, people are afraid to talk to their mom or their dad. How about that? They're afraid to talk to their best friends. Still today, after all these years, I've been doing this all my life, it seems like, and people still reject this teaching to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Yeah. Why? Why, 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 why? And if you're already doing it, man, praise God. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking, then what I'm saying to you then is you turn around and go help somebody else and get them to go out and soul win. Teachers teaching teachers to teach. You want to get a soul winner to go out soul winning. You teach them how to teach others to go soul win. You want to help grow the body of Christ. And you cannot do it on your own. You must have help. You must train up others to do the work of the ministry. Always be training. Don't just be teaching and preaching. Be training. Be getting people to do the work of the ministry. You do the work and you train others to do the work. You want to duplicate yourself. You want to grow yourself. You want to be a seed that's sown in good ground that produces a harvest that multiplies. Not just you, but 30 times. You want to have 30 preachers preaching because of you. You want to have 60 preachers preaching because of you. You want to have 100 preachers be preaching because of you. Yeah, I have that. You could have that. And then 100 becomes 1,000. 1,000 becomes whatever, you know? It's just, just, just you want to keep, keep it going outward, okay? So let's pray. Because it's snowing pretty good now. Lord, I thank you for the snow. I thank you, Lord, for bringing me up to Netherlands, Colorado this morning or today. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. And I pray, Lord, that you send your spirit to quicken every person who's hearing me to let them know that they are called into the ministry, that they can receive you, Lord, as Savior, and they can be forgiven of their sin, and they can know that they're going to heaven, that they know they're not on the left hand, but they're on the right hand, that they'll come into everlasting life with you, but those on the left hand will be cast into everlasting fire. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you're having us go over to all those that are destined to go to that left hand. Because as long as they're not dead, we still have an opportunity to go preach to them, Lord. As long as they're not dead. Can't pray for the dead, but we can pray for those who are not dead yet. Because it's appointed to every man to die once, then the judgment, then after the judgment, the second death, if their name is not found written in the book of life. And we don't want anybody's name blotted out of the book of life. We don't want anybody's name blotted out. No, we don't. Because we have mercy, Lord. You gave us mercy and love for people. So that's why, we, that's why we come out to do what we're doing. That's why we're standing in the snow, in the cold, doing this video. Trying to get others to go out and do something. Yeah. Well, thank you, Lord. In your holy name, Jesus, I humbly pray. Amen and amen. Man, oh man. Like a blizzard. <laughs> God bless you, man. I love you very much. You take care, all right? Bye-bye. Hello again. Just doing a lot of different videos here, just kind of showcasing uh, some of the work that we're doing out here in, on the street in Colorado. So one of the things that we do is we, we dress for Jesus, we advertise for Jesus. You can see all the clothes that we're having, the banner, 
We dress for Jesus, we advertise for Jesus. That's what he called us to do. That's what he called me to do, to advertise for him. That's, what, that's the word he used. And then he gave us different places to go. Right now, as you can see over my shoulder, we're in Nederland, Colorado, uh, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, we do that through different means, different ways of doing it. And uh, we're just not always lifting our voice. We lift a banner that has the message of Christ on it. And then uh, we lift our clothing, what we actually wear. And uh, then we do our street sermon that actually also publishes the gospel. And so everywhere we go, we are advertising and publishing the Word of God and uh, different forms and fashions. And so it's just not one way of doing it. Anyways, just thought I'd say this, uh, and kind of add this to some place in the video. We'll see uh, how this works out, all right? <laughs> see you later.